If you're venturing into HF radio, an antenna analyzer is probably one of the pieces of equipment you'd like to have. Along with an all-band, all-mode transceiver, a 100-foot tower, a three-element beam, and don't forget that matching linear. Arguably, you'll use that tower, radio, and antenna every time you go on the air. But that $200 analyzer will probably only see service while you're setting up the antenna. So, in the interest of getting the most out of our ham dollar, here's a DIY no frills bridge analyzer that, even if you had to buy everything new, can be done for less than $40 and can be up and running with less than a half afternoon's work. What makes this a doable project is an AD9850 DDS generator board and an Arduino style microcontroller. In this video I'm using a Leonardo clone but the Uno or Pro Mini would be just as suitable and yes if you want you can add buttons, knobs, battery and a nice case but here I'm attempting to show that for a one-time DIY use project those pieces aren't essential. So let's get started. Like most projects of this type, I started by Googling to see how an analyzer works. And along the way, I found the bridge detector circuit that K6BEZ was using with an AD9850. His arrangement made sense to me, plus it was a proven setup. So I chose it as the template for this project, but used parts that I had on hand. However, the two components I didn't deviate on were the diodes and the dual op amp. I'm not saying that one in 34 diodes or 741 op amp won't work, but since I didn't have either and I could get the AA143 diodes and the MCP006-6002 ICs just as easy, I stuck with them. With everything needed at hand, I use the free version of Eagle to build the schematic of the bridge detector. In the past, I probably would have just started sticking the components on the pref board, but Eagle supports board layouts, and I wanted to play with how these parts were arranged before committing to something permanent. Once satisfied with the Eagle layout, replicating it on the pref board was a snap. Next, I added the 9850 and used double-sided foam tape to fix the Leonardo to the pref board. With everything wired, I then started on the Arduino code wrapper. At the moment, there are two versions of this code. The first is an ultra-simple routine, which just blindly starts at the low end of a frequency range and steps to the high end, at whatever increment you declare. Along the way, it outputs the readings to the serial port where you can copy and plot them to a spreadsheet. Here, the spreadsheet program I'm using is Microsoft Works, which is free and comes pre-installed on some computers. Another free option is OpenOffice. It, too, includes a spreadsheet application. The two are similar in what they can do, but also can be different in how you get there. For example, here with Works, I'm saving my copy data to a CVS file using Notepad and then opening it using the Works file command. With OpenOffice, you can simply paste your copy data into a spreadsheet. Works will treat the VSWR values found in the CVS file as numbers, allowing you to go directly to charting your results. But OpenOffice will treat the same data as text. So before you can plot it, you'll need to apply the value function to each entry. It's not hard, but copy and paste do the repetitive part, and you'll have a chart in seconds. If this is unfamiliar territory for you, remember, one of the tenets of ham radio is to encourage exploration. Unlocking these spreadsheet features will enable you not to just visualize your antenna, but all kinds of tabular data. The second version is a little more autonomous. With this version, you still need an external computer to declare the start, stop, and step frequencies, 
but when it runs this version posts all the results to uh, 128 by 64 OLED display instead of the serial port. Here we see it scanning my 40 meter inverted V. The start frequency has been set to 6.4 megahertz and the stop frequency of 7.8. The max SWR was set at 1.5 and the step increment is 10 kilohertz. With this sketch it starts at 6.4 and calculates the SWR at every 10 kc. It will continue until it hits the stop frequency or until the SWR hits 1.5 coming from a lower value. When it satisfied the sweep conditions it then reports the lowest SWR found and its center frequency plus the lowest and highest frequencies that met the SWR maximum. The whole process, of course, can be repeated when the Arduino's reset button is pressed. The last point related to this project I want to touch on is dealing with the nonlinearities inherent to this method. This circuit will readily show where the antenna's minimums are, but when it comes to reporting values accurately other than one to one, this approach depends on working with values that are proportional to the forward and reflected signal seen at the bridge's sense points. But given the small signal coming out of the 9850, the diodes are not operating in their linear region to the RF they are supposed to rectify, particularly the diode in charge of recovering the reflected voltage. I looked at this from several approaches and primarily relied on connecting known resistive loads to the bridge load leg and rec then recording the results. From there, I wrote a Python routine that assigned values to the missing points between the ones I had measurements for and used these results to create a lookup table that the sketch could use to convert measured readings to effective values. The next approach I took was to break the diode's output into three regions where each has its own equation to calculate the effective value. And in the end, this method seemed to work best. Also, I want to note that the sketches include parameters to compensate for differences in the diode's output plus the differences between the gain of the two op amps as well as the resting values found at A0 and A1 input pins when there is no input. As it stands now this unit reports with an apparent accuracy of close to 10 to 20 percent over the load range that would be of interest. But to be clear the unit here is a one of so how much your parameters might differ I can't say. So if you elect to take on this project, I'd very much like to hear how it works out for you. Well, that's it for now, and good luck with your next project.